we are going to combine deep learning with 3D data processing to generate a mesh from a single image. So this is fantastic what the technology allows us to do today. And I just wanted to show you how you can do that very simply with only five Python libraries and with only six main step actually. So I'm super excited to show you how we can do that. And I will actually give you a little candy on top or a cherry on top, which is by taking an image just like this one from my environment or using a generated image using AI, so stable diffusion model and seeing what we get from it. Whenever you're ready, let's get onto the workflow that I propose for you. So as you can see, we are going to go through these six main steps. So first we'll prepare the environment, make sure everything works smoothly, having Anaconda set up, five Python library installed and ready to go, and our IDE. Then we will take an image, so we'll use my smartphone, take a picture, and I will use Table Diffusion to generate an image. After that, we go on to pre-processing, making sure our image is ready for our network, uh, which uses a depth estimation model. And after that, we go on to point cloud generation. We could stop here, but we'll push one more extra step to go into 3D mesh generation. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Right now, the first step is to prepare the environment, right? Which is here before going on to the other step. I just launched my Anaconda prompt and Conda and list to check the environment that I have already created and I will use the Pooks full processing. So Conda activate Pooks full processing. I don't advise uh, taking this kind of name. I was not inspired. So once I'm in here, we are going to install five libraries. So the first library that we're going to install is PyTorch. Very simple to install it here because we will use the depth estimation that will pick on it. And the depth estimation will run only for inference, not training. We could actually install it without having CUDA, but it's best for me to show you how to do that. So we'll use pip and there is a great way. You just go onto pytorch.org. You get onto get started. And in here, you have this uh, little nice um, table where you choose actually what is your system. So PyTorch builds table, that's what I want. I'm on Windows and I will use the Conda package with Python and I want CUDA 11.8. And what I do is just I uh, copy this line, I paste it here and I press enter. All right, and I actually get an error, which is Conda SSL error. OpenSSL appears to be unavailable on this machine. So this is due to an installation problem. So what I think is usually useful is you take the libssl library and the libcrypto as well, just copy it and you paste it in Anaconda 3 uh, DLL folder. We'll paste it here, continue, continue. Um, that should do the trick, so we close and then Anaconda prompt, Anaconda 3, execute as administrator. Yes, and that should do the trick. So let me zoom in and that activate books full processing, right? And now I get again this little line and let's see if this did the magic that we wanted. So after what took about three minutes, he asked me to install these packages. What do I do is of course I say, yes, go ahead, install all these packages. And while it's installing, we see we have pillow, we see we have NumPy, we see we have Network, super nice, um, CUDA, all the CUDA libraries, of course. So this will be useful. And voila, we are done with PyTorch. That was the longest. So what we can do is we, we can actually install Pillow as well so that it will update to the latest version. Pip install Pillow this time. We see that the requirement is already satisfied. The next um, library, so Pillow is an image processing library. The next library that we are going to install is matplotlib for plotting graphs and visualization. Very simple here. You just type pipe install matplotlib and press enter. And that's done. We have some errors with geopandas and such, but that's okay. So after that, we will uh, install transformers. So pip, pip install transformers. This library is basically just to get from the uh, Hugging Face website, it's an IP call to, to get to the Hugging Face website, retrieve the model and use a lot of function on it. So it's super easy to use and it's very nice to have this high level um, thing around. So it's like a wrapper to use a bunch of models that are hosted on Hugging Face. 
and this is done. So the last library I forgot to turn in uh, the installation, but I can show you that I installed is Open 3D. So do you see it? Uh, pip install pillow, pip install matplotlib. That is okay. Pip install transformers. We did that, and then after that, pip install Open 3D. That's the library that will allow us to handle point cloud, handle 3D meshes, go from one to the other and make some kind of computation. So super nice as well. But I guess at this stage you already know it if you uh, watched other video. This is a library that I really like because it makes it easy to get into Python for 3D and also understand the concept underlying. I will use for this tutorial spider, so pip install spider. You could use JupyterLab, you could use uh, VS Code, whichever fits you best. It will make it easier for us to code. This also goes pretty quickly, so why it's installing. Fantastic, so at this stage, we just talked about preparing the environment, so this exact first step, right? So what did we do? We used Anaconda as our virtual environment to handle everything. We installed the five libraries just before with an ID. And now I'm going to scratch that off the list and we can get onto step two, which is taking or generating an image with AI. So let's get onto that. Uh, but for now, let me just take my, my phone, I open it and I will just take a picture like this, very good, uh, of my computer, I plug it in, okay, that is done, and I will then export my image and show it here. So this is the image, right, uh, that I took off my uh, screen, so you see a lot of stuff, I'm working on a workshop uh, that I do uh, Friday, so um, that would be the input. Uh, first and and then you have other ways to do that so let's check out another example i could go on to for example um, dream studio which i like really much i will make something which is more yeah three two is okay um maybe four five nine eleven twenty one no yes okay yeah, three two is okay um a style uh what kind of style do we want I will want a specific, something a bit weird we could try and use. So let's say uh, digital art. I like it. What could we want to have? A weird bird, it gave me an ID that stands on a massive tree with branch in shape of pencils and behind a huge futuristic city. Please use vibrant colors like purple, uh, uh, yellow, that I like, um, and red. Right? So let's see what it does. This is really, really quick. Um, okay, so it generated what we wanted. Let's take, um, I like this one. So we'll just download it. Download this weird bird. So great, this folder mono reconstruction, um, and I will organize as I like to have it organized with code and data. Very good. And this bird, I will put it in data. Um, weird bird AI, right? And I will also put the other image. Okay, so. Preparing the environment is done. Taking the and generating an image, so that's what we did right now. This is also done. So now we let, we go into image pre-processing. So let me open again this uh, little window and just type in spider to open up spider IDE. And in it, I will just call the solution to uh, <laughs> create, uh, let's say, or do the image pre-processing first. And here we are into our coding environment. Um, I had to switch it a bit, so let me get much bigger. So the console, I cannot put it bigger, but my coding, I could put it bigger. So first off, what we do is actually import all the various libraries that we want to have. So mathplotlib, um, from there we import pipeplop as plt, peel, so this is pillow, we take image, we import torch. From Transformer, we will use uh, GLPN image processor and GLPN for depth estimation, all right? So that's pretty much it at this stage. Now what we do is actually we will get our, um, so this is like library import. I like to do that to have this little uh, uh, things. Let me save my code, save as. So this is it, right click, set console working directory, and then chuck 
for the second step. So one library import. Then we'll go on to the second step, which is getting the feature extractor, which is GLPN image processor, and getting our model, which is from GLPN for depth estimation. Okay, so getting model, deep learning model. And here, uh, for the feature extractor, you can just use what I will put here. I will share the code uh, afterwards. So feature extractor and model from pre-train, from pre-train. We'll not do any training, it will, it will take longer. So first thing that I do is I press shift enter. This will run this cell. Now, while he imports, I will already create the first third cell, which will be for, uh, let's say, loading and resizing the image, right? And the first thing that we do is uh, we will, so I will launch this. And as you can see, is getting all the configuration pretty safely. So the heavy lifting, the heavy lifting is massive here, uh, because if you were to do that without this transformer library, it would take longer. So for the image, we'll use pillow. And as you saw before, we imported image. So image equal to image. You will understand that it is pillow open. And here I go one file data and I forgot to put my little brackets. Um, and after that, what was the name of a file? I will take my desk first. Okay. My desk dot JPEG. So we'll resize it because our model expects uh, something resized. And um, for that, we'll put it to 480 if image it is above that, else we keep it. All right. And that means that the new height will uh, be divided by 32 to have something which is uh, pretty nice and heavy. After that, the width will compute it by multiplying basically the new height with the image width and we divide it by the image height to have something which is good. We may keep the difference uh, between both of them with the new width. And after that, basically, we will adjust the new width and the new size and we will resize with the new size. So that means doing that. Okay. And that is our image pre-processing. -pre and after that, uh, we're going to step four, preparing the image for the model. So let me run this. It should run pretty smoothly. And as you can see, we have an image. If I double click here, this is how it looks, uh, the image, uh, at least for the computer and for our library. So it looks like everything is working pretty nicely. So to prepare it, we'll call that uh, inputs, for example, and uh, we will use the feature extractor. We'll take the image and return tensor. We'll just return the points, all right? So pity. We can run that, but before doing that, I will prepare the step five, which is getting, let's say, uh, the prediction from the model. Okay, so if I run that, this is all live, this is not pre-planned, so if it's uh, not working, the idea is I can debug with you like what I did just before with Anaconda. So getting the prediction from the model, so that worked, our input is there, right? So you can see here, image processing with the batch feature, so it's a new Python object that is now perfectly standardized to be used with our depth estimator. To do that, um, we will use no gradient because we are not training, okay? And the outputs uh, will just take in all the inputs and the predicted depth will be outputs.predicted depth, all right? So let me execute that. And while it does the prediction, you can hear my computer, which is starting to push out a bit of power, which is good. It means he's alive. Um, I burned one graphic card not long ago, but I think we are okay here. And after that, I will just post-process a bit the image to be able to visualize it. So it means taking out the borders and after that visualizing with my clip. That's why we had it. So let's call it uh, six post-processing. And here, what I do uh, is in two, two steps like this, okay. Uh, I don't format super well the code, but at least uh, it should be working pretty nice. So if I plot that, this is wonderful. You can see that we have the image that I took and the depth of the estimation. So it's not the best, best estimator. Uh, you can see that it's a bit blurry on the edge, but it's also not the best image. You see that he had problem managing, I think, behind, I think we'd have some problems, but it will be pretty interesting to see uh, what we get from that. Okay. So we went a bit ahead here because I actually, uh, if I get back on track, preparing the environment, we did it taking and generating an image. We did both pre-processing the image. You saw how I did 
very quickly and the depth estimation is already done. So um, actually what I hide here is what we have. So that was the entry image and that was the out image. So here it was a bit cleaner uh, because I used a bit more weight um, and it's actually from an other estimator which is called depth anything. It's also on hugging face. Um, there is a workshop that I'm doing on it. Uh, and, and, and I will put the link below if you want to see uh, the live course. It's more of a course, super cool stuff. Now we go on to step five, point cloud generation. All right, so here, you -hoo. let's get back on our little um, experiment. So post-processing, this is done. And now we can go on to point cloud reconstruction. So um, first thing first is importing. I don't like to do it this way, but I think it's easier for for us to manage how uh, we think about the script here. Importing the libraries, which is um, numpy import numpy as np, import open 3D as oh, 3D, beautiful. Now, after that, um, so let me execute this cell. And after that, uh, we'll just get the width and the height from the image size, and then we'll compute the depth or we store that in a variable, the depth image from the output uh, before, right? And then we push that to an array. So uh, preparing the depth image for open 3D. Uh, this is before actually, um, uh, so let me do that. With an eight image size, depth image. Okay, we encode it on the, uh, eight bits. That's the max to slice it, of course, and we keep it as end eight, so eight bits, right? So image is NP array of image. This is what we want because we will pass that to an open 3D function, which is actually creating a depth of 3D. And we will also do that for the op open 3D object. So let me show you to be clearer. So the depth of 3D is our new variable that will create a geometry, an open 3D geometry based on our image here, depth image. The image of 3D is actually getting um, the image before from peel, but here's a numpy array to read it, right? And the RGBD image uses the function create from color and depth, and we pass the image of 3D, the depth of 3D, and convert RGB to intensity. This is false. So very good. Uh, this is actually creating our little open 3D object. Oh, sorry about that. Our open 3D object. So now I can run that and as a ninth step what we can do is actually set up the camera setting from which we want to generate our point cloud so as you can imagine we have a depth image we don't know the intrinsic of the camera so the, the parameter of the camera which means that we need to hint at it we could use um, a calibration file or things like this let's be blend and Let's take a standard um, projection model, which is called the pinhole camera projection model, and get the intrinsics from this pinhole camera projection model. So uh, creating a camera, very good, camera. And here to do that, we'll create a variable called camera intrinsics, like this, and we just generate a pinhole camera intrinsic. And we set the parameter, the width, the height, 500, 500, and the central projection, which is at the middle. Okay, very good. After that, it's time to generate our point cloud. Already, it goes very fast. So um, creating the point cloud, if you followed uh, other tutorials, this is something you know how to do. Uh, basically, it's very simple, creating O3D point cloud. And basically, what I do here is PCD O3D uh, geometry point cloud create from RGBD image or GPT camera entrance six super cool and after that we want to visualize all so 3d dot visualization dot draw geometry and we pass a list of open 3d object um, I close the parenthesis and I execute the cell line you can see in my console it's very good because I have a follow-up it's easy for me to debug and the 10th I will execute it now and let's pray that we have something not too noisy as I said before this is truly uh, something that I did. Wow, <laughs> it's uh, extremely noisy, <clears throat> except it's upside down. So let's check how he got it uh, from what I have. So what is interesting is actually my screen interpreted it as, <laughs> as a depth um, potential. So this is super noisy, but okay. I mean, uh, the principle works anyway. What about the desk? The desk seems okay. Again, if you use a better model, depth estimation model, you will have better results. 
But it's fantastic to, to have the ability to just take a picture and generate 3D from it uh, just with Python and open source libraries. So let me close it. I know you are curious about how it will work with um, the generative AI stuff. Let me get back to that at the end to change just uh, actually the input image to rerun all the rest and we'll check what we have. But let's make it work once uh, the full pipeline for this data set before moving on to the generative AI. So uh, getting back on our workflow. So this is done, 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 done. Point cloud generation. I put a little grape because um, yeah, it's the closest emoji to a point cloud where one grape is a point. All right, so the point cloud generation is done. We now move on to the super interesting step, which is 3D mesh generation. Interestingly, we will actually use and leverage Open3D as well. So let me create this uh, little piece of um, cell, which will be pre-processing or post-processing, let's say post-processing the 3D point cloud and here, we'll take out the outliers maybe we will estimate the normals that we will need and we will use poisson reconstruction uh, to create our 3d model here if you are not uh, familiar with the ways we mesh a 3d point cloud i propose yet that you check the other video on a 3d meshing strategy with python because i explained ball pivoting algorithm uh, poisson and other strategies to mesh a point cloud with open 3d so as I say, outlier removal and normal estimation. So outlier removal, very simple. We use the statistical outlier filter. Basically for each point, we take the 20 nearest neighbors um, and we'll take a standard ratio of 20 to be uh, very soft on the outlier removal. And PCD is our variable and we'll just select the points that are returned by this function. After that, we estimate the normal uh, and we orient the normal to, uh, to, orient, to align with direction. Let me maybe change something um, I will change that PCD row PCD row because I don't want to erase uh, directly my um, PCD so PCD row select by index okay so we're good to go so we'll rerun that yes uh, and now I'm here PCD equal PCD row select by index and and then I estimate the normals and the direction so it may Hopefully it works because it's an um, open 3D object. So let's see what it makes if I do that. Yes, it works. So now, uh, like if I were to put a PCD in here, we have our point cloud with uh, 200 more or less thousand points, whereas the row had the same amount of points. So actually the outlier removals did not work. So let's put a standard ratio of six and try it again and check out uh, PCD and here we have something that is actually filtering a bit more of point cloud which is nice right so that's what we wanted now um, our normal are estimated so what I could do is also uh, visualize our point cloud as well so we put it here and I will put PCD very good um, you don't need to rerun I can just use that in the command line and this is now our point cloud with the normals um, so yes, let me bring it here. As you can see, the normal makes it very noisy, but it's okay uh, to be an interesting artistic mesh. <laughs> Hopefully it gets better on the bird image. We approach the end and, pardon on intended, we will now go on to the surface reconstruction. So the surface reconstruction, as I mentioned before, let's just use um, the Poisson reconstruction, like here, with a depth of 10, I can show you like various depth um, possibilities the, the the deeper you go the more refined you are the number of thread is just how you leverage your cpu <clears throat> and you take the first element that gets out from that which is normal and after that i will rotate the mesh and before saving it um, maybe it will be good to actually visualize it right so let me bring in everything we could also put here uh, the point cloud but for now it's okay so this is what we have in this first reconstruction. And if I launch that, what do we have? And that's it. We have our mesh and it's wonderful because we also have the color associated to our mesh, which means that I could actually pass that into in painting methods or generative AI, change everything and use that to color our mesh. I would not do that. 
but that's a very good idea. Okay, so yeah, actually I did this line, uh, code lines just to show you because we got the texture information uh, applied on the vertexes, but what about the mesh itself? So what I do is I create a mesh uniform, I paint it with this color, I compute the vertex normal and um, I visualize it. <laughs> Sorry, I actually just did that live, but I forgot to press on the recording button. So this is what you have, right? And another thing that I showed you, but it was not recorded. <laughs> so now let us adjust the depth just for you to see. If I put it to five, for example, um, I will comment that so that we see only the uh, uniform color. You see that it's much rougher, right? So let's keep it to 10 for now and comment that. And I will comment that. I run it. And the last step is actually to export the mesh. 3D mesh export. And here, to export the mesh, so this one, what we do is actually o3.io.ray triangle. And inside we'll give the file name. So let me open again here and add a folder called results. So I get up one time results. Um, office dot obj and here I comment that as a string therefore and after what we save we save this time the mesh so let's do that execute the cell pray that everything works smoothly and we'll just visualize what we get from uh, this little experiment so obj is one type of mesh file but you have other type like PLY that you could export as well so if I go into results I have my office I don't have the texture I guess uh, but it's fine for now I don't need the texture so let me delete this previous project on cloud compare and just drag and drop my mesh it's a heavy mesh having this depth aspect of thing we can cool it or we can create a bounding box to refine it I did not do it for now uh, so yeah, it means that actually the colors we had was not a UV uh, map, but it was a... Uh, yes, so it's very noisy, but you see the, the idea how to get a mesh from a single image. So this is actually beautiful. Now, just for you to see if I were to export as a PLY, just changing that, you understand it's much quicker, the PLY. And if I put it now uh, in Cloud Compare, so let me check, yeah, PLY. I put it here and you see that I have my vertexes uh, color as well. So my mesh as a color, so which is a bit nicer, right? Super cool. If I get back to my mesh procedure, the 3D mesh generation is done. And as far as analytics goes, you could also export the point cloud and look at the differences, for example, that we could do. But when I look at the time of the video, I think that's already good enough for today. One thing that I promise you is to explore what's happening if we actually use the generative AI pictures. So let me do it right now. I just show you the change. I would just cut the time of computation. So it was not my desk. How was it um, called again? Data Weird Bird AI PNG. All right. So good, it's another type also of uh, data. It will allow us to see if everything works smoothly. And at the end, results bird AI.PLY, and we are good to go. What I do now is I will kill my console, right? So all my variables get erased, and this time I will run the entire script. Um, I just changed that, enable to enter channel dimension for format. Okay, so when I explore actually the error that I get, I understand that I think it's a problem of, um, unfortunately, yeah, that it's a PNG. So I need to, to actually convert it to JPEG image. So let me open it, File, save as, weird bird, and this time I will choose a JPEG here, and I save it. Let's see if that fixes it before going into uh, complex operations. So JPEG, just let me clean the console this way. And once everything is set up, rerun it and pray that everything goes well. It goes well. So first thing first is we have our depth image. Already, yeah, noisy as well, you can see behind. Now <laughs> we have our 3D object. So in here, indeed, it's nice if we can actually uh, 
clean the noise a bit. It doesn't pick up very much what you have behind, but still pretty impressive, right? Uh, very, very cool to get these kind of things. So let me close that. So the mesh is actually nice and you see that you have everything as it should be. I can close that. I can keep my depth to 10. When I open that, I get into results and we have our bird AI PLY. Let me open it here, apply. And you can see that we have the bird. Pretty cool, eh? As a mesh. So am I the right? Yeah, I'm on, on the right direction. Uh, it's just a bit noisy above, so we could clean that. But still, if you want to get onto a last stage, uh, let's say I will go this way maybe. And actually the outlier filter should be maybe set a bit higher. Um, but hey, uh, we, we didn't do it. So just to show you with Cloud Compare what you can do, uh, we could compute, for example, or fit a plane. Tools fit plane. Eh, not very good. So I will destroy this plane. Um, and what I will do, my bird extends there. So I would just get a view like this. I prefer to play with point clouds. So for now, uh, yeah, let's export the point cloud. And let's check out what we have. So we computed the normal, but I will not do that. So let me bring up the mesh again. Sample, don't generate normal. Generate my point cloud, which may be a bit easier to work with in this case. And I will take my point cloud and cut all the elements in between that I believe are more or less noise. Um, okay, so that we have something which is a bit better um, and then we could actually retrieve, so I could make connected component, do it like this, we have two components, I remove the background and this is more or less my um, little bird, I forgot that I cleaned the, in this case I cleaned the colors so let me redo it with the colors, connecting component, I go very low and I don't put random colors. This is my background, this is my point cloud. And then you could link that, for example, to um, what we saw with Blender, where you could import your little bird into Blender and animate it uh, as we did with the, last, uh, the, the other tutorial. Okay, so if I check again, that's how we used only five libraries to prepare the environment, to to take and generate an image, we did image preprocessing, then we went on to depth estimation to finally generate a point cloud. We could stop here, but I wanted to go the extra mile and show you a 3D mesh generation. Again, special thanks to Mattia Gatti, which is a remote sensing researcher, which uh, coded most of that. And also, you have here all the references for the alpha shapes that I used for the bold pivoting algorithm, which we did not use, but is interesting, the Poisson surface reconstruction, uh, global local path networks for molecular depth estimation with vertical cut depth. This is the article which actually was implemented to use the depth estimation. And then after that, segmentation and support inference from our GBD images. Wonderful, so that is truly a fantastic step. If you went up until there, kudos to you. I don't like to um, do that, but as you, no, doing research around this topic um, takes a lot of time and expertise. And if you could do just one thing to help the channel grow and then the community learn better, hopefully, <laughs> just liking, putting up a comment about what you would like to see next uh, and sharing that with the world, if that makes sense to you. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the tutorials. So let's see each other in the next video. Bye bye.